that's it. So it's been a while since I've done video, and I've got a few things that want to start making their own strings. So I thought I'd just do kind of a primer on the tools that I use to make my own strings. So we'll start with the basics. Up at everybody, I've got a string grid set up. Standard Three Rivers. I got it all marked up with a sharpie for my needs. question I got yesterday is what kind of string to use. You can see I've got uh, B500 and B50 and I've got some B55 up in there. Uh, they're really cheap. Just a great material to learn how to make strings with. And then I have a bunch of uh, C97. So that's all just good stuff. I just think I like the way it works for me. Use whatever works for you. One thing, keep those stickers on there. kind of weird. I have a full length 2x4 and I've got more clips uh, as I need but I've got a couple need for this, a couple clippers so I will be showing that in a little more detail in a moment. And then when I'm making strings I actually keep my bow on the table with us. So uh, when I get my bundles made and I want to measure my loop sizes and I want to make sure there's a perfect size for the bow I'm making. Uh, I wrap my round the, the tips themselves before I start uh, making the loop. So it's nice to have the bow. And if you have a string that's the exact right length, it's nice to have that to give you a point of reference. A few things that don't hurt. Got a uh, nice heavy duty metal ruler. I use it for kind of everything. It's just nice to have one of those around. Uh, and then this little plastic ruler. One very sharp knife, a sharpie. I usually want to mark something where I'm putting the serving, where I'm putting the silencers, something. One really good hobby blade. You need that, especially when working with abrasion resistant material. A couple little lifesavers here. Uh, binder clips. Two different sizes, two different colors for me. They have different needs. Of course, a good serving tool. And here comes one of my favorite tricks. From a sewing supply company, it's a, a threader. So when you need to get this tiny string through that hole, Now, you just need to get it through a big hole and you're set again. So, one indispensable piece right there. Uh, for different strings, you need different diameters of serving. And I use tied knock points. So, I like to have something thicker than the serving that I'll be putting it down on. So, I've got that. Of course, you're going to need a lot of string making wax, so I go through quite a bit of that. And then I keep a little piece of leather handy. Uh, I do burnish the uh, wax into the string, so that's what that's for. When I make strings for other people, knock pliers, so I can put down a brass knock. Uh, and when I do my own, of course, I've got a couple of pieces of a 2117 shaft, so when I'm tying knots, I can use these to pull on string that would otherwise cut into my fingers. And then a lighter to clean up my ends. Okay, so for a couple fun things. Clamps. I end up clamping everything down at some point in this process. So uh, yeah, you can see that. You know, one thing that uh, I'll do is I'm going to get bad comments about that. Uh, I'm clamp this down. So when I'm getting it lined up and when I have it under pressure, I can I'll try that. Uh, 
use quite a bit of pressure on this. So there we go. Now this thing's not moving anywhere. Now I can take another one of these, flip that one the other way, and now I've got a place that I can do my uh, spool off of. So that's pretty slick. This kind of helps keep everything in, in, under control while you're doing these bundles up. Another thing I use these clamps for comes to the next phase when we're actually getting the, uh, the string ready for stretching. So for that, take one of these little guys, pop down there, take a big dog. So, maybe I want a little bit of tension on this, so when I clamp this one down, I'll raise this in just a bit. So this gives me a nice place to work. So uh, if I've got it twisted up and I want to put some string wax on it, and now I'll burnish it in. If I'm doing my center serving. Uh, I've got this I can get going. You can see the tied knot points. Uh, you know, if I'm trimming these up, this is some place where it's not going to unload the bow if I accidentally uh, nick it, uh, burning the, the three strands on that. So, uh, oh. Another thing, if I want to do uh, wool puff silencers, I can just take that off the spool. Put them in there, get these all set while they're, while they're on this. And then the next phase comes when I actually want to pre-stretch the string to make sure it's not going to destroy somebody's bow. Like mine. So, next little super secret is uh, just a plain old 500 pound ratchet strap. So for this, up on the 2x4 that I use for everything else. once you're live and recording. Anyway, so what that does is once that's on the uh, board, that'll let me crimp the ratchet handle. It's going to be up to 500 pounds, which is more than enough to, uh, to stretch any kind of string out there. So as those inches get piled on, and you can further twist it back up, you end up with a, a perfect string for the bow. But, um, that's a lot more stuff than most people have in their string making kit, but I think you know a few of these things, uh, stumbling through trial and errors, kind of got me to making my strings at the quality I am, and uh, I think those are pretty darn good strings. So there you go. There's a little something to hold everybody over until we start making some strings. <laughs>